Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service of the word for this, the first Sunday after Trinity. This morning, our focus is going to be on generosity, the generosity of God to us and our generosity to each other. So we're going to begin the service by reminding us of some symbols that reflect God's generosity. We are grateful for your generosity in creation. We bless you and thank you. We are grateful for your generosity in sending your son to us. We bless you and thank you. We are grateful for your generosity in providing us with sufficient so that we too may be generous. We bless you and thank you. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Through Christ, let us offer our sacrifice of praise to God. Let our lips proclaim his praise. And so as we gather together, we bring with us some thoughts, some words, some actions that we wish to say sorry for. And we offer them now to God in true repentance. What God has prepared for those who love him he has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Gracious God, you shower us with so many blessings, yet we struggle to share them with others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You love a cheerful giver, but we sometimes give grudgingly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We forget that all we have is yours and that you can use our gifts to bless the whole world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And of course, God offers us forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And having received forgiveness, we now join together in the Gloria, the song of the angels. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we now join in with our special prayer for today, the Collect. 
God of truth. Help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom, that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. And so now we're going to hear our readings from Holy Scripture, with our psalm being read by Patrick, our New Testament reading read by Trevor, and our Gospel reading read by Mike. A reading from Psalm 100, all lands summoned to praise God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations this is the word of the lord the reading is from saint paul's epistle to the romans chapter five and is considered by some to be the very focal point of his thinking headed peace and hope therefore since we have been justified through faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Here ends the reading. Alleluia, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers 
into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So having heard the word, Vicky is now going to explore that through her talk. Today we are focusing on the Generous June initiative. So uh, this morning I'm talking about giving. And I've chosen to stand here near the Mother, Mother's Union banner and I've placed the crucifix from the Lady Chapel here as a focus. And when we think about giving, we start with God. God's nature is to give generously, persistently and extravagantly. Last week, we celebrated the Trinity, that God is one God, three persons, a communion of love. And that shared love is self-giving and it flows out from God to create the world and to bless it. And this banner reminds me of God's generous giving. God gives the gift of life that we are all blessed with. Here is the mother tenderly cradling her new child. God gives the gift of the beautiful earth that we enjoy. And God gives us the gift of Jesus who comes to save us. And here we see the extent of God's self-giving love, emptying himself of his divinity to be born as a helpless baby and dying on the cross to redeem us. Such sacrificial giving for us. And Paul in our Romans reading today reminds us that we don't deserve such love that we are sinners. Yet God's love and generosity are so great. I was struck in these two images by how vulnerable Jesus is. Generous giving makes us vulnerable. We're offering ourselves to others and we're exposed. We're giving something of ourselves, our time, our talents, and we might be rejected. And sometimes that might happen. But more likely, our generosity will make a difference to others and be life-giving. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus sees how in need people are. They are harassed and helpless, like so many of us today, stressed and unsure how to respond to the tough challenges of life. He sees their need for God, their need for the comfort and hope that only God can offer. And he has compassion for them. But there is so much need. So Jesus calls his disciples and he gives them authority and sends them out as partners in his work. They are to cure the sick, and to proclaim the good news. 
I wonder how the disciples felt. It's quite early on in Jesus' ministry and they have so much to learn. I wonder if they feel anxious, unsure, vulnerable about being sent out. But Jesus believes in them. You received without payment, give without payment, he tells them. Reminding them they have received so much from God. Forgiveness, love, life and Jesus himself. All freely given to them in love. And in response, they are sent out to give sacrificially to others. And God also calls us to this work. Like the disciples, we are forgiven, loved and blessed. And there is so much need. Perhaps we feel ill-equipped and anxious. But we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit to help and guide us. As we respond to God's generosity by trying to be people who give generously and sacrificially of our money, our talent and our time. To share some of that abundant love that God lavishes on us. And this is a journey. It takes practice. We don't change our habits overnight. We take small steps at a time. But there is always more that we can give as we journey deeper into faith and follow Jesus. Every day we make lots of decisions about how we're going to live. And this week, I encourage you to take some time to review and think about how you spend your money, your time and your gifts. Yes, it's a strange time and we're not in the normal pattern of living that we're used to. But is there ever a good time? Faith asks us to take each day as sacred and to use it wisely as a gift from God. So think about how you spend your money. What does it say about your priorities? You don't need to be wealthy to be generous with money. Look at the story of the widow's mite. She had very little, but she gave generously out of what she had. Could you give a proportion of your income to the church and to charities to enable the vital work that's done, if you don't already? Is there an element of sacrifice in your giving? Sacrificial giving has an impact on your lifestyle. Could you give more? Think about how you spend your time and your talents. Could you do more to reach out to those who might be struggling? Are there members of the congregation you haven't seen for ages who might be lonely? Could you give them a ring or send an email or a card to lift their spirits, even if you don't know them that well? When you reply to an email, could you spend a little longer writing it and add in an appreciative comment to show you value the other person? How could you share some of God's generous love today and every day through the resources that you have been given. Amen. So now we join together in an affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God 
and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we come to our time of prayer and our intercessions this week have been prepared by Betty. Our bidding and response, when you hear, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. So let us pray for the church, the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Generous Lord, we thank you for giving us a rich and abundant planet on which to live. Give us hearts to understand, never to take from creation's beauty more than we can give. Never to destroy wantonly for the sake of greed. Never to deny to give our hands for the building of earth's beauty. Never to take from her what we cannot use. Help us to work with you, to care for your creation today, so that the people of tomorrow can share the rich heritage you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation because of coronavirus. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. And in their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work, many will be restored to health through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world, especially at this time of social unrest and racial tension. We pray that human rights may be respected, injustice and oppression cease. Help us to put aside preconceptions about other people because that alters our behaviour and simply accept that they, like us, are precious in your eyes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to be generous givers, dear Lord, both of our money and our lives, that we might make a difference in our communities. We ask this through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who gave all that he was, that we might know life in all its fullness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now a prayer for the Christian community. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect their, our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God. 
giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we draw all of those prayers together by saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so as we bring our service to a close, we are offered a blessing. God you are everything to us, giving us life, filling us with love and setting us free from sin that we might live in you. Accept the work of our hands this day. Take our lives, give us your peace and renew us in the service of Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those you love today and always. Amen. So go forward today knowing that the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ and the peace of the Holy Spirit goes with you. Amen.